my god. Okay, I saw the FedEx guy. Creepily, I asked him, do you have a package in there for my address? I don't think he understood what I was asking. And he was just pointing down the block. Yeah, yeah, that's where that address is. He thought I was asking for location and I was asking for a package. I start to walk away and I look at my email alerts and I see that she was on her way. And I saw that the truck was in my neighborhood, waited until he took away a package because you know how FedEx is, so you don't sign for it, they take it back to the headquarters and you gotta look for it and take, no. So that he parked outside my apartment and I was just like, do you have there for, and he was like, yeah, and my dad was there too waiting for packages. I mean, we have been burned by FedEx in the past, apparently. Like, just give us the package, we're here, let us sign for it right here, right now. And we got her. I ordered Mothership 5 on Friday. Today is Tuesday. Came here fairly quickly. Shipping was free. It better happen. I didn't even open it. I just came back from teaching and I had to get on here quite away. If you want to see us crack into Pat McGrath's Mothership 5, swatches, an eye demo, our thoughts, then let's get into it. I'm wearing my hair in a low pony today because it's been raining these last two days and as you see how I usually wear my hair, not ideal to have under a hood because the hood just would not cover any end. <laughs> I can't speak, I'm so excited. Got my box cutter so we could crack into this. I am so sorry my nails are not painted. I actually painted them earlier but I did so over a peel off base coat and it did not loss. So I just peeled them off and now we got bare nails on mother pad. I'm so sorry that we're gonna do swatches with bare nails. Forgive me. But I just had, had to crack into this. Now I wished I, I got a little bit of a packaging situation Pat McGrath headquarters. We have the, but I just feel this isn't secure. Like, where's the bubble wrap? Where's the bubble wrap on the bubble wrap? You know what I mean? Like, that's what I wish they had wrapped this into because she's so fragile. Look, look at this package. This is just beyond. And I'm, it's in the drawer. I'm in a weird situation because my camera is in front of me, my phones, my microphone now is in front of me. The close up of this is the bigger version of this. So, this is like a very close up version of what's going on in the bigger picture. It's like she was hinting at it all this time. Like, she already knew she was going to come out with Mothership 5. And it's just like a tease in terms of the graphics. But. I just never encountered packaging quite like Pat McGrath and how she does it. I mean, she really just transports you into her world of inspiration. And I think that's why I'm such a fan of all her eyeshadow palettes because they are expensive. I mean, this little sucker was $125. I used the VIP discount 10% off to knock some off, but dude. And again, I'm a fan of Pat McGrath. If you haven't seen her Instagram feed, look at her Instagram feed. She pulls from Hollywood stars, uh, paintings, posters, musicians, album covers, like anything that provides uh, texture and color and just a whole world of different artistry. And whenever she releases an eyeshadow palette, I want to be a part of that curation. I want to witness that interpretation. And this has been highly anticipated because this is the warmest arrangement of shades she has ever collected to be in one palette. All her other palettes, she had like a warm shade here and there, a neutral shade here and there, and all the colors were like pop heavy, saturated pieces of gems, really. And now we have Mothership 5. As you know, it flaps open like so, and the graphics run throughout the whole box, out, in, and throughout. Here she is in the classic black lacquer eyeshadow palette box. And here you have a close up of the engraved gold logo here for Mother Pat. Quick details as we always should go over when going over eyeshadow palettes. Made in Italy, 18 month expiration. And where are the, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, it's here in the front. It's very hard to see because 
the grams and ounces are all printed on the front in gold. The whole palette is 13.2 grams or 0.47 ounces. I'm just gonna put the math up here next to me because I'm using my phone as a mic. I got my iPad on standby because I want to read her breakdown. First of all, I'm not sure if it's her writing the uh, post briefs on her Instagram or on any of her marketing material. Listen to this description. Succumb to the splendor of 10 extravagantly extraterrestrial shades saturated with pure color and diamond sparkle intensity, ranging from ravishingly radiant rose gold, incendiary crimson and molten metallic bronzes to mesmerizing mattes presented in a luxurious couture palette. <sighs> So this is what we're gonna get ready for. You listening? Okay. The benefits. Creamy and soft textures, igniting metallic pearlized pigments and amplifying color. Extreme blendability and adherence. Pure color intensity. Polished and bright multi-dimensional finish on the eyes. Emollient light texture and glide. Sensorial feel. One stroke, fully pigmented, opaque color saturation. All right, listen, I've been ready. We have been ready. I know this is expensive. I didn't care. I made sure I put some money on the side so the blow wouldn't have been too much. I don't care if these are shadows that already exist in palettes that I have, in whatever. This is Pat McGrath. This is her take on what crimson is, bronze is, molten metallic, whatever is. I wanna be a part of that world. And that's why I made the purchase. <sighs> I didn't open it yet. I didn't open it yet. So we are going to reveal right here. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you tell I've been waiting for this for a very long time? <laughs> here it is. The beautiful, immaculate Mothership 5. As you already know, the shade names are not on the palette. They are printed on a card that comes separately in the box. Here's a card that corresponds to the shades inside. So what I'm also gonna do while we swatch these, I'm gonna read off the shade descriptions also listed on the website page for Mothership 5. I think it is great that she has these shade descriptions because if you're not familiar with eyeshadow but you really wanna try Pat McGrath, she breaks down not only what the shade looks like, but how you can use it. So, skin show divine glow. Electrify inner corners and illuminate the lid and the brow bone. Use wet or dry. Entrapment. Sweep this warm terracotta shade through the crease to sculpt and contour. Bronze blaze. Metalize lids by pressing pigment on with finger or use a brush for soft blending. Rose gold 005. Guild lids and inner corners with this gleaming metallic rose gold. VR Fire Opal, dramatically drenched lids in this mind-altering dual chromatic color. Blitz Flame, envelop the lid with intense multi-dimensional metallic crimson. Press pigment with finger or blend with flat brush. Disobedient, sweep this deep mahogany through the crease for definition. For precise lining, use a dampened brush. Guilty Pleasure, Tempt and transfix with a vibrant flash of golden taupe. Press on with finger to build opacity. Extreme aubergine. Create decadently opaque lids or cut the crease with one sweep. This was, the mattes feel a lot creamier in this palette than they do in previous palettes. Before we move on, I wanna quickly from her smaller palette, I believe this is the Bronze Ambition, because when this matte released, it was the warmest out of all the mattes she had released thus far. So we're gonna go in with this shade, because I'm curious to see what that looks like next to Entrapment. This is again in the shade, Throwing Shade. So this is what, let's see how we could do this here. Maybe we'll do it on top. Ooh! Throwing shade appears a lot more orange than entrapment. Entrapment looks like it's described here to be a warm terracotta. I'll put up next to me what throwing shade is described to be. I'm sure it's somewhere on her website. Let's dive in. Those are the swatches. We went over the packaging details. Let's just get into it. You know what that means.
Okay, so I need to prep my lids before we apply this shadow. I will go in with my Too Faced Born This Way. Guys, I'm so sorry it's gray. I could have waited tomorrow to film this, but I just could not. I just could not wait until tomorrow. So please forgive me. Maybe I'll lighten this up a little more. Maybe that'll be better. I don't know. <sighs> I'm just going to prep my lids. Maybe just carve out the brow a little bit. You know what? I'm just going to go my finger because we're also racing against time. It's been gray all day, but the light has been going down earlier. So right now it's 542. Like we're entering the danger zone here. So I just gotta make sure I get this demo in and pop in before the sun goes down completely. Now, like a true hardcore eyeshadow applicator master, no, not going to set the concealer. I'm gonna keep it sticky because I wanna see what these shadows do. The Born This Way uh, Super Cover Concealer does set, so it doesn't stay super creamy on the list, which I appreciate. So you don't have to worry about the shadows not blending on this concealer. Okay, 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 okay. I'm so excited! Mother Pat says to go in with Entrapment first, this shade here, to warm up the crease. And that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm going to use my Wayne number three. Oh, but she is dirty. Here we go. Going in with Entrapment. Something I've encountered with... <laughs> Why am I so low? Something I've encountered with her mattes is they always turn up darker when I apply them on my lids. For some reason. Like, I don't know if it's my brush or... I feel like this would turn out... It looks so warm in the pan. I'm not sure if it's because the lighting is making it cooler but man oh man like i wish in person it looks pretty warm but again every time i apply the shadows and when i look at the pan it's like i didn't know if it was going to come out that dark i'm really building it up here friends as you know how i like to do in my transition shades okay that's a little better i think now did the light change on us a little bit friends because I was really having a panic attack. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it. Now we're gonna move in to Disobedient, which is like what they said is like a mahogany type of shade. It does kind of have some red in it. And this is with Wayne number four. Are you gonna focus on me? Thank you very much. Now to the outer V. Ooh, that's pretty. Well, this is getting smoky very fast. It's incredible how smoky we can get just from those two mattes. I'm curious to go in. I'm going to go in right away with, what is this called? Extreme Orber Orber Extreme Aubergine. Same, number four. You know what? I want to go in with this on the lower lash line. I know that's crazy. I kind of want to see what this does by itself. And of course, that means me probably having to come back on here and showing you guys because I love just using single matte colors as a smoke shade for my entire eye. Can you imagine this with the Marc Jacobs? Oh yeah. <gasps> Say no more. I'm already there with ya. Oop, got a little messy there. Hold on. Got a lot of control. So good. We're gonna fix that. Oh, I like how this looks. Uh huh. You got a little crazy there. So good. I'm gonna pull that out. Got a little too aubergine. All right, all right, all right. I'm taking, what is this? Disobedient with my E40 and just grazing the top here a little more to smooth it out. And why not? I'm gonna take it here as well under extreme aubergine just to kind of see what that's gonna give us. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say entrapment for the shade we just applied. Disobedient, I wanna go more in with the crease and just smooth that out a little bit more. Oh my God, we're getting really smoky here, folks. Woo! How are we liking this? Now, I wish this looked a little smoother. 
I could definitely try to go in next time with a powdered lid instead of a freshly concealed one. But I feel like I should have been fine. It could have been my brushes needed to be cleaned again or better than just rubbing it on a towel. I don't know, but what I do know, what are we gonna put on our lids? That's the question. I feel a very powerful need to go in with Blitz Flame. I know this is gonna be very pop, especially with the setup of the mattes, but you know what? Oh my God, what is happening? Wait a minute, I was not ready. Oh my God, I was not ready. That is definitely opaque. They were not kidding, whoa. And it's incredibly smooth. Also, forgive me for not reporting, did not experience any fallout from the matte application. It did get a little dusty. We're dealing with a little dust around the edges of the pans, but it's a very fine dust. It's not like a chunky kickback texture that I sometimes experience with other palettes. Oh, that looks incredible. I ran out of liquid liner. I go to a uh, Clio Professional on 14th Street. It's like a Korean makeup brand that I love their Curl Black liquid liner and I just haven't been able to get down there to buy one. I feel like this calls for one, but you know what? We're gonna do what we got. I will now get in with Guilty Pleasure, that taupey shade. I just wanna put it here, like between uh, the Blitz and the Disobedient? Dishonest? I forgot. You know what? Not too bad. But I feel this is better than as a standalone shade. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna put back some Blitz. I'm gonna put some Blitz into the mix. What I do want to try is one of the transformative shades. How about the VR Fire Opal? So this shade here I wanna see how that will look over Blitz. So I got it here. Oh, oh wait a minute, oh my God. I was not ready. I was not ready, help. That is something else. Kinda did not like what that did to my Blitz. I feel like Blitz is great on its own and this I feel might turn out better on one of the bronze shades. I'm gonna take my pinky and go in with Rose Gold 005 and use that on my inner corner. Now when I try to apply this shade, it got all over my face. So this is definitely one of those very transformative shades that if you do not properly powder under your eyes, you will get virtual reality all over you. I'm going back with crimson and I'm covering that up, but it's interesting when I do, it brings more out of, it brings more copper out of it, which is interesting. Going back with my number four to just clean up here cause it definitely traveled way too high. So I don't want that to move into my mattes that much but i'm loving blitz crimson is oh my god like this shade is insanely beautiful it's so creamy to the touch and the opacity upon first contact is mind-blowing i can't get over it this is the astral luna gold what does that do is that yes i don't want to mess this up but i want to see like Okay, that's definitely a better shade to put on top of crimson because then it just looks like flames erupting out from your lid. It just looks really beautiful. Oh, that's a good combination. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. Let's see. What would that go? Maybe, okay, if we were by chance go in with the taupe shade right so that's the taupe shade and then we go in with the vr what is that fire opal that transformative shade that i feel is a better combination than putting that on top of the blitz flame 
The transformative shades are beautiful. They really are, but they will get all over you. But if you don't mind that, if you're just playing along, it could definitely add could add to the look because it will it it sticks unfortunately when it gets on your face so i'm just gonna keep it as i'm just gonna keep it like that you know what i mean this is really sparkly the astral luna gold is crazy sparkly i wanted to take a moment and note that the camera is not picking up the glitz factor of these topper shades i mean the light and gleam that radiates from each particle is outstanding oh my god i want to see how uh rose gold fares with a pencil brush so i'm taking my morphe e36 which is still super green i want to see how much we can get on there using a brush not too bad because we still have skin show nude skin show Divine Glow, excuse me, I think Skin Show Nude is from one of her other palettes because we could see how that looks on the brow bone. So I'm taking Divine Glow, just placing it right under the arch. And I think this is a beautiful, warm, like champagne shade. Further blending this out so it could look seamless. I definitely want to go in with bronze blaze is this shade here i want to use that same pencil brush and pop it right under my lower lash line oh yeah i am curious to see what we can do because she did say one of the mattes can be used wet and applied as a liner I'm gonna take my Wayne Goss number eight, the push liner brush. Going in with that shade Disobedient, so one of the deeper mattes in here. Yeah, man, let's try it wet. So I have my MAC 50 Plus, do I? Oh, I got the mini one, that works just fine. And it's locked, good job. Let's see what that does as a liner. Okay, here we go. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. This is how it's showing. That's a that's a pretty deep shade. I think that's deep enough for a liner. Just tapping it onto my lash line. Oh yeah, there we go. I think we see it now. Now I'm not gonna wing this. I'm just adding a little more depth to the lash line. So it doesn't look too bare against these shades. Cause I'm just gonna go in with mascara. How are we looking? Are we looking crazy? I'm gonna go in with some mascara. And of course, since we'll remain in the Pat McGrath realm, I'm going in with her Skin Fetish Highlighting Palette with the shade Fine Gold 003 using a Sigma F35 brush with that color. I'm just going in, man. And also with a little bit of bronze, but just under fine gold. So almost like it serves as a transition, transition, transition highlight, if you will. I feel like I need a little more still on the inner corner. So I'm going in with fine gold from the highlighting palette and just placing that to my inner corner. And I think we'll tie it all in. Oh, how do you like it? First of all, I'm just blown away with how smoky this eyeshadow look became just from using these mattes. Like, from how they look in the palette, extreme aubergine, yes. But I feel like I want to go in with it by itself just to see how it looks because it's really hard. I guess not. I guess I saw it some when I was applying it to my lower lash line, looking more eggplant than terracotta than the other two matte shades but i was not ready for entrapment here this shade here like it looked like it was gonna go in that color but when i started to build it up i mean it got smoky really fast and again mahogany i keep wanting to say mahogany isn't that the shade and this obedient really took it up this is such a crazy intense color like 
Oh my god. Now, by far, my favorite color is Blitz. I mean, um, excuse me, I should say Blitz Flame. Just the texture of it and I mean, it looks like a freaking Christmas ornament. It's so gorgeous. Now, the trouble shades, there, there's always trouble shades. Not in terms, well, yes, performance, but it just, these shades are tough because I feel like you need something that's going to help them adhere to your lids or else they will end up all over your face. That's why I would recommend if you would ever go in with the transform shades that you either do your eyes first and have some tape on standby to take the sparklies off or powder the heck out of your under eyes and bake so you could sweep it off easily. I still want to go in with the taupey shade. Again, that is called Guilty Pleasure and also the bronze blaze, this shade here. Now again, these are all shades that are not new, but again, I just needed to dive in and experience Pat's vision of what a warm eyeshadow palette would look like to her. I love the smokiness of it. I love the red crimson shade. I love how Astro Luna Gold can make it a little more orangey, even if it's just like a speck of it. But again, like the trouble with these astral shades is that they're they're chunky. They're chunky and if you don't get them to adhere, they're going to fall all over your face and they're also going to transfer. So the whole eye look will turn out like it's going to look sparkly all over. If you don't want to deal with that, I would just stay away from those shades and just stick with the metallic ones that are, are going to give you a smoother finish are not gonna get all over your lids and your crease. I like it, I like the mattes. I like how they turned out. I mean, look at that smoke, that's crazy. I wanna come back on here and go in with Guilty Pleasure. I think that's gonna make for a beautiful, like taupey, smoky eye look. I appreciate the fact that you can go taupe, you can go bronze, you can go red, or you could go different shade altogether. Like, let's see if we combine the bronze shade with one of these. I'm gonna go in with this one, the fire opal shade. See how that transforms what well, kind of just made it to that shade. I mean, that's a beautiful shine. My problem is, is that I wish it just kind of looked like that on the eye and it didn't get all over your face. That's my one gripe with the the VR and the astral shades is that I wish they were a little, they adhered a little better to the lid. And I guess it's because I have more skin that there's more of a chance that it will stick because my lids already have eyeshadow on it. So if I were to, let's say, maybe if I rubbed it instead of patted it down, would that better buff it in? Like, I don't know. I want to go in, hold on. I know this is crazy, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in with my Sigma with Fire Opal. That's what we're dealing with. Ooh. This on top of pale gold. Turn it into like a mint. Oh, you know what this shade reminds me of? It reminds me of that Mel Cosmetics highlighter that I almost got because I thought it was such a unique, unique color. That is crazy. I mean, I went too far for sure, but I just wanted to see what that did. Oh, it's like almost, it takes, it pulls the green out of the pale gold and just looks like a, a minty type of sitch. Oh, that's pretty. For kicks, we're gonna go in with Astral Now, the other transformative shade, and see how that looks. Ooh, that really brightened it up. Oh yeah, that now that when you apply the Astral Luna Gold on top of Pale Gold 003, is gonna pull more gold and really kick up the shine for sure. Woo! I'm still stunned. I mean, what is that? That is nuts. Oh my God. I think these shades are a lot of fun. I cannot wait to dive into this again tomorrow and use either the taupe or the bronze shade. I mean, 
Again, I love Pat McGrath. I love the vision that she has. I love the shade she came up with for Mothership 5. I am very happy she released a warmer uh, palette that's a little more user-friendly. I think if people wanted to dive into Pat, but they just couldn't use those shades because they just didn't feel comfortable using blue and bright emerald green or even like that beautiful like magenta shade in subversive which is why i'm happy she came out with the smaller palette because i feel this is a lot more accessible than her bigger mothership palettes but if you really wanted a mothership palette that you knew you were going to use i think this is phenomenal you could just use this shade all over create really beautiful smoke and just pop on the divine glow on your lid or maybe you just go in with guilty pleasure is that what it's called yes i'm starting to memorize these names and the fact that you could use these on your face as well and kick up and change like what these look like i feel like again in her mind she wants you to incorporate all her makeup and to experiment with it and create different shades and different finishes i definitely feel her makeup line encourages that experimentation and that creativity which is great because it allows you to break out of your comfort zone and to try shades that you might not have otherwise and discover new ones just from her collection without having to dive out of it i'm definitely going to do this again tomorrow i'm not going to go in as wild i'll just keep it here instead of bringing it down but i love that green gold effect that the VR virtual reality fire opal created on the pale gold. I love it. And the intensity of this side, layering the Luna gold on top of pale gold, extraordinary. You could do so much with this palette. Again, I absolutely love the arrangement of colors. I love the mattes. I love the extreme aubergine shade. I love all of them. I am a fan. I'm gonna call it a review because I know that's what we like to see and what we like to hear. But I knew I was just gonna love it no matter what. And I, that's just a diehard fan in me, right? And especially because if Christine thinks it's an A, Christine from Temptalia gave this a freaking A. And she is a tough grader. Let me know down below if you picked up the new Mothership 5. I know for sure Sephora is doing a hard launch for it on Friday, and that's the day it will be on the shelves. If you rather test it out first before you order it, whether it be from Pat McGrath Labs or Sephora, that's your opportunity to do so. I highly recommend this palette if you are have been waiting for a Mothership palette that has more daily friendly colors to use or you love the smaller palettes but you really want it like a actual traditional Pat McGrath mothership layout compact then this is your time to get it. This is a beautiful arrangement of shades. Again, you have three mattes, crazy metallic shades, ones that change the color of your eyeshadow just with one application. It's going in with the rest of my other Pat McGrath palette for sure. Let me know again down below if you pick this up, if you're thinking about picking it up. Uh, any questions, any qualms you might have about this palette, let me know. I know it looked really crazy. This was definitely an experimental video. I just wanted to go in, dive hard, and see what we can do. And until then, friends, that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here with another review, chit chat, get ready with me, tutorial or demo. Take care and I'll see you again soon.